So I consider this some pretty exciting news, but I've not seen anybody else cover it online, and I'm kind of scratching my head as to why. It's been rumoured for well over a year, maybe year and a half now, that Elegoo are working on a DLP printer to rival the offering given by Anycubic. And thanks to a commenter on one of my YouTube community posts, they mentioned that the Chitu box update for the Pro users actually contains the specs for the Mars 4 DLP. I started doing some searching online, and the first Google result led me to this video by MemeChan. I'm not entirely sure how he's got hands on with this, but I'm confident that Elegoo did not want him revealing these details before this point. After all, they've said nothing to us. I've not heard anything. Uncle Jesse's not heard anything. We don't know anything about the Mars 4 DLP other than the rumors that they're working on it. So let me talk about what we learned from this video, but it could all be part of some crazy elaborate hoax. It just doesn't seem like it. Just a quick note on DLP and why this is important. We'll go on to the spec of this Mars 4 in a minute, but I wanna talk about why this is such an important move for Elegoo. You see, there are various types of printer technology and the main ones tend to be LCD, which is a form of SLA. You've then got DLP, which is a projector, and then you've got laser SLA, which is kind of like FDM, but it uses a laser to do the photo curing method. The difference really is that with an LCD, light goes up and out when you're curing a layer of resin. The problem with light is it doesn't travel in straight lines. So when you fill a chamber with light below an LCD, yes, it'll go through the LCD other than the areas it's masked out by the layer, but that light won't go straight up towards the build plate. It'll ever so slightly feather out towards the edge, causing LCD bloat. It's not a bad thing, and with some of the high resolution printers we've got now, you can hardly even notice it, and it doesn't really matter in a lot of cases. But it's an inherent aspect of this technology that just happens and you need to accept. With DLP though, at the point where the image focuses, and that's right below the build plate, you can actually get light that travels more so in a straight line, so each of your layers are incredibly sharp. Now that is a double-edged sword because DLP projectors are much, much lower resolution than things like the 8K printers for LCD that we have at the moment. But it's a bit of a toss up between the two because on the one hand, you've got an LCD high resolution printer, which causes bloat, but, and again, even those printers do still need a level of anti-aliasing to remove all of the layer and voxel lines from them. DLP's resolution is low, so if it projects a pixel edge, which it will, then that will be represented on your model, and as they layer up and become a 3D object, they show as voxel lines on a 3D print. Once again, you can get rid of most of this and make it imperceivable, especially with certain resin types, but it is still there and something you need to know about. As I said, you can anti-alias it, but the difference really is, are you anti-aliasing with LCD and adding more softness? Whereas here, you don't have that LCD bloat softness in the first place to begin with. So all the focusing that you're doing and all the anti-aliasing that you're doing leaves for a much, much sharper and more refined print. The TLDR is, yes, whilst it's lower resolution and you do have some voxel lines, your resulting print is much more accurate to the 3D rendered model. The main benefit I find is that because that light is so direct and so straight, the most practical benefit is the fact that you don't have to dial in your exposure time anywhere near as much. With an LCD, you've got to get it down to tenths of a second to avoid overexposure and excessive bloat on a model. With a DLP, however, that range can be anything from 1.7 seconds that I use on my D2, all the way up to three, four, five, six or more seconds, and you don't get any detail loss. DLP printers also consume much less power and the display components inside are rated to last for 20,000 hours rather than 2,000 hours of an LCD panel. All in all, they're just much easier to use and last a lot longer. And whilst yes, you can take pictures with a macro lens and see the layer lines on these, with the naked eye holding a, a rough half arm's distance, you can't actually tell. And if like me, you paint your models, just anti-alias them, which keeps them sharp, much better than an LCD, and you can't even tell that those lines are there anyway. For more on the specifics of a DLP printer, you can check out my video covering the Photon D2 from last year. 
So let me talk about what we learned from Meme Chan's video. So please go and give him a like, follow, subscribe. He's the one who revealed this information, though I expect he probably wasn't meant to. So sorry Elegu, but it's out there now and it wasn't exactly hard to click translated closed captions on a YouTube video. So as he points out, this is larger than the Mars 3. The overall unit size is larger than the Mars 3. And it's got a lot of design elements similar to that of the Saturn. Though now it seems to have employed these go faster stripes down the side which we first saw on the Neptune series of printers. Despite some of the rumors suggesting otherwise, the actual housing on the printer is entirely plastic, though it has a metal effect texture applied to it. The build plate and VAT are a fairly standard Elegoo affair. The build plate itself is, they call it sandblasted, but it's, it's smooth. I don't have a problem with it, it just is what it is. And the VAT, again, typical, is also metal, though this is actually wider and has two slopes at the side, making it easier to add resin mid-print. Just remember if you're doing this, don't do it as it's curing because you'll shift resin around that's busy being cured. Wait for the lift and retract setting, or even better, pause your printer. Once again, this printer has a three and a half inch touchscreen and very much a similar UI to that of the Mars 3 and the Saturn and all of the current Elegoo printers. And they also include a carbon filter, which now seems to come as standard with all of the Elegoo printers. That's a smart choice. It gets rid of 90% of the smells. I don't even notice them anymore. Now it's worth noting that this has only one single linear rail, though as pointed out in that video, it is 20 millimeters wide and the housing is completely metal to add stability and support to that rail. And he also noted this comes with the Tango Slicer by Voxel Dance. And I've never heard of this before that video, so I'm gonna go and check their website out in a minute to see if it's any good. Now, before I get onto the main specs, I just want to talk about the name. I don't like that it's called the Mars 4. That suggests to anyone that the Mars 4 is an improvement to the Mars 3. Yeah, by all means, it's the Mars series of printers, if that's what you want to call it, but we've still got other planets you could have chosen from. DLP is a completely different technology, and most people would see this as a downgrade to the Mars 3 anyway. I'm sure I'm not alone on this, but it's a confusing naming convention that indicates the wrong thing. So call it the Mars, call it the Mars DLP, call it the Mars 3 DLP, call it whatever you want, just don't call it the Mars 4 because that suggests a improvement printer to the Mars 3. If going forward, Elegoo, you're only going to reveal your new printers all as DLP and this is the new evolution of that entire range, fine, go for it. Otherwise, it's a different thing and should be named as such, but you've already done the packaging now, so there's no changing that. So the important thing to talk about with this printer is the build volume. And we know now that that's 132.8 by 74.7 by 150 millimeters. And I know people are probably trying to look for a tape measure or use their fingers to guesstimate that area. Let's just put it into relative terms. It's 40% smaller than the Mars 3. And when compared to its competitor, the D2, the Mars 4 has a larger print area, but loses 25 millimeters in height, making it a 6% smaller print volume than the D2. Now, the bit we don't know yet is the projector's resolution. On the D2, it was rated to be 2K, but they actually fake this. There's a little module inside the projector that vibrates and essentially shifts the pixels from one position to another. It takes longer to cure for each layer, even though DLP is faster. Relatively, it takes longer on the D2 than it did on the Ultra, but it gives you a quote unquote 2K resolution on that DLP machine. Now, Elegu often go for the cheaper side of things, but with them being new to this area, they do need to step up to compete. So I'm praying they've found a way to get a native 2K projector in this machine. Again, most people are probably panicking, thinking, well, the Mars had that years ago. But again, I need to stress, and you need to see this firsthand to really understand it. It's DLP, it's a different beast, it's much more sharper, and it's much more accurate. And the other thing we don't know is the price. Now, we know Elegoo tend to try and get on the underside of their competitors, and with the D2 being out and that price point, I really hope that Elegoo's offering is significantly cheaper, more in line with the standard Mars series of printers. So that's it, guys. That's what we learned from that video. So hopefully Elegoo will share more with us soon, and I will have a review of the Mars 4 DLP printer up as soon as I've got my hands on one, but I'm not going to release that until they let me. 
As always, a huge thanks to our patrons who are on the screen now, and a huge thanks to you for watching this video. If you found it useful and found it helpful, please let me know. You can add a comment or just a like, just hit that like button, just so I know that this was helpful to you. If you don't wanna miss out on content, such as our review of the Mars 4, then make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be aware of that as soon as it goes live. That's all from me. I'll see you guys next time. Fohammer out.